to three run lead when Carlos Gonzalez turned the tables with a go ahead grand slam. Last night they scored again in the early innings, but this time Steven Strasburg made it stand up in a sparkling return to the rotation. Today the tiebreaker features Max Scherzer, who has everyone's attention. All the makings for a perfect Sunday on Masson. Today's a chance to win a series. It's a chance for a winning homestand and a ball game you really want to win if you're going to get on the plane for five and a half hours and fly to the West Coast tonight. Big road trip coming up. Big ball game today. We'll see the Rockies again next week in Colorado. The Nats have seen plenty of them this weekend at Nationals Park. So a great win last night and you have to be excited with what we saw from Steven Strasburg. Already looking forward to his next start, but that was pretty strong. Yeah, Nats fans excited about Strasburg. Strasburg and Scherzer. I don't know how excited the Rockies hitters are about facing these guys back to back days, but last night, what Steven Strasburg accomplished is what you saw when he came off the DL the first time. He picked up right where he left off. 12 strikeout performance, didn't walk anybody. The fastball command was even more impressive than the velocity, although the velocity was just as impressive. The curveball change up to go with it. Gave up three hits, had three hits himself. Just a perfect night for Steven Strasburg. His return from the DL and a little smile on top of it. Like to see that. 91 pitches, 65 strikes. And as FP noted last night, he threw 55 fast balls in that ball game. Max Scherzer, he's got his fastball and his whole repertoire ready for a good hitting Colorado team. This guy's been really tough. For some reason, the number's a little higher at home, but still hard to beat. Yeah, and that's strange with a no-hitter at home in the mix for his home numbers, but you look for him to be strong this start. You look the the, the innings pitched. He's leading the National League in innings. He's leading the National League in complete games. He's tied for first in the National League with shutouts at two, second in strikeouts. So, I mean, pick a category, any category where other than wins, Max Scherzer having an unbelievable season for the Nats. He looks to continue it here today against the Rockies. Looks to me like he's a, in a bad mood, and that's a good thing. Bryce has been in a mood to be on the bases all weekend. Three for six, three walks, four runs scored. There's one of them, and he's played some great defense as well. Approaching the wall, not a problem. Bryce Harper, one of the most complete Major League ball players right now. He is hot.
to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. And by Night Point Systems. They offer the technology you need when you need it. Gorgeous day. Fans excited. They get to see Max Scherzer the day after Steven Strasburg throws a fantastic night game here. Mostly clear skies, some clouds in the distance. It is 84 degrees. Ideal playing conditions, although the outfielders will tell you some of these early innings can be tough on pop flies looking right up into that sun. Nolan Arenado, first in RBIs in the league, second behind Bryce Harper in home runs, tied with John Carlos Stanton and Todd Frazier. And Arenado in this series, four for seven, a homer and three runs scored. Only two Rockies in the lineup have faced Max Scherzer. Yeah, fastball this year averaging 94. Slider, curveball change to go with it. Last start on the fourth. Got the no decision. The Nats 5-4 win against Arizona. Six headings, four hits. Gave up three runs, struck out nine Diamondbacks. Walked 314 pitches. First pitch at 136. It's in there. And the rubber game of this three-game set is underway. Charlie Blackman, two for eight against Nats pitching, batting 293. He'll pop it up left side. So battling that sun, Escobar, foul ground, sees it, grabs it, one out. Good to see him back in the lineup today. All beat up, but he's out there playing. Alan Porter is in his sixth year in the big leagues. Mark Ripperger at first, the crew chief, Jeff Kellogg out at second. There he is, and Brian Onora in the rocking chair at third base this afternoon. Jose Reyes with a sacrifice in the series, one for seven. Well, something to keep an eye on early. Max Scherzer trying to get that fastball away. He's pulled it across the plate just a few times. He's trying to get it out there to Ramos, and he's pulling it back to the inside. You see that right there? Ramos had to reach back across. Wilson having a look and it is just into about the second row over the screen. And he's done this four times already on fastballs just a little quick. Maybe an overthrow pulling it across to the other side You see the reach by Ramos. Definitely a place you don't want to go to to the next hitter. Oh yeah. Jose Reyes has a rocky seven for thirty six in nine games. Got that one in on him, and Reyes fouls another out of play. I'll take the defense for the Nats behind Max Scherzer today. Worth Taylor Harper, the outfield, Desmond Escobar, left side, Rendon Zimmerman, right side, and Wilson Ramos, day game after night game. Buffalo swinging it. And Jason Worth back in there today. Yeah, he's way over toward the left field line against Jose Reyes. Taylor shaded well toward the gap. And Jose Reyes making some contact here and making Max work hard. Jose came over from Toronto where he hit 285 with 16 steals in 69 ball games. Blue Jays, the hottest team in baseball, Paul. They've won seven straight, two and a half back of the Yankees. Bouncing ball, right side. Anthony Rendon, two outs. Now a matchup we've been looking forward to. The Nats six plus runs and going back to the middle of May unbeaten in 18 games. Rockies get runners in scoring position. They get awfully tough third in all of baseball. They're 272 batting average first in the National League and the Nats even with Denard Span hurt not stealing a ton of bases but Michael A. Taylor and Ian Desmond I think Danny Espinosa's maybe chipped in with one or two. They've been perfect running lately. The Nats have 42 steals on the year. Gonzalez is one for six career against Scherzer with a solo home run. So Reyes, who's now two for ten, and this left-handed batter, the only Rocky starting today who have faced Max. Breaking ball, it's well hit to right. Harper going back. He can only watch it. And Carlos Gonzalez hits one off the back wall of the bullpen within a couple of feet of where his laser hit Friday night. That's his 24th, 1 0 Colorado. Looked like a slider right down the middle about Bell Tie. Maybe a curveball. Check the velocity again, but it stayed up and 
Carlos Gonzalez, one of the hottest hitters in all of baseball, not missing any mistakes these days, folks. That ball was kissed. Max has given up 14 homers this year. There's a good slider in there to Nolan Arenado, who also has homer in this series, and he's four for seven. First in the league in extra base hits with 58. We'll settle for a single right there on a ball beyond the reach of Ian Desmond. That's why it's so tough as a pitcher when you come out of that bullpen and you go to your first off speed pitch to have that feel for it in the pen, especially against a guy like Carlos Gonzalez. Max Scherzer's slider. Always usually electric in the first inning. That one didn't break the way he wanted it to. And it gets a hot hitter. One nothing. Not a big deal. Here's Ben Paulson, the first baseman. It's interesting. We talked about Scherzer's numbers not being as great at home as they are on the road with a 295 hitter stepping in. But Max, that was only the fifth home run he's given up here this year. He's given up nine on the road. That ball just took off. 94 miles an hour had cut action to it and maybe a little bit of rise. So he's got a live arm going today. A little extra. Paulson in the series, one for seven with an RBI. 93 by him. One ball, two strikes. Kind of odd that he's four and five at home. 11 and eight overall. Victimized by some defense. Couple of home starts early. And a one two pitch. Swing and a miss on 95. Rockies a couple of hits. Fortunately, the homer was before the single. And now the Nats have to get busy. This series. Nats are fifth in the league in runs, fourth in homers. They've scored at least four runs now in nine straight games against the Rockies. And Ryan Zimmerman, as usual, in the middle of it. He's had six games in a row with an RBI. He slugs, he produces against the West, and that includes this weekend. Three hits, three RBIs, a walk against Colorado pitching today, represented by Johan Flande. Yeah, last start on August 2nd. Three to two loss at St. Louis gave up two runs on four hits in five innings. Struck out three Cardinals, walked nobody, 72 pitches. A fastball, four seam, two seam. He'll run it. 
Slider 85, changeup 85. Changeup probably his best pitch. He's a guy that's got a little funk to his delivery, all kinds of stuff coming at you, and he's a left-handed slinger, three-quarter release. And you know Escobar will see him for the first time now that he's back in the National League. Mets got a run in the top of the second, although we kind of like the pitching matchup down there today. It's Bartolo Colon and Chris Archer. Rubber game down there, one nothing Mets, middle of the second. And the Nats come up here, it's Escobar taking a strike. Younel on base eight games in a row, but he hasn't had a hit in the series. 0 for 4, two walks on Friday night. Counts even 1 1 to the man who has 117 hits. That's one hit out of the top 10 in the National League. He's missed about two weeks worth of games. And still up among the league leaders in base hits throughout the season and Escobar seventh in batting average at 311. Anthony Rendon behind him this time and then Bryce Harper. Bryce having quite a weekend. Escobar to Hopper well hit to Reyes for the first out. And set the Rockies defense for you behind Johan Flande, Parker Blackman, Gonzalez, the outfield, Reyes here on the left side, Descalso Paulson right side, and Michael McHenry behind the plate. Put on a serious defensive clinic <laughs> in this three game set. Yeah, it's the 9th of August, and we've already got the gold glove going to him for three straight years. Yeah, him and Manny Machado, who's better at third defensively? Josh Donaldson's solid, but I mean, this guy's smooth. Same way Manny Machado is. Anthony Rendon in this series, 0 for 5. Hit leadoff last night, didn't play Friday night. 3 for 6 career with a double against Johan Flande. Twenty nine year old lefty originally signed with the Phillies at the age of 18 11 years ago spent three years with the Braves mostly a triple A Gwinnett. Oh my gosh. He's just playing pepper over there. Two outs. I will show you all the plays that Nolan Arenado's made this series at third base. It, it, there's some tough ones in here, folks. Trust me that he's making look real easy. That one probably the toughest on Michael Taylor because of the speed of Taylor. But you know, whether he's fielding it on the run, getting a short hop, setting himself, watching the arm right here. And that play he just made on Anthony Rendon on a tricky in between hop was pretty sweet too. So if you like defense, and if you talk to the Rockies people, those plays we just showed you are nothing every day, huh? Harper into the shift. That's Jose Reyes. Bryce gone on one pitch. And so Johan Flande gets a home run from Gonzalez and throws three ground balls.
University College on this date, 1946. How about that? Nearly 70 years ago. First time every major league game was played under the lights on a certain night. There were only eight teams in each league at that time. Obviously, the Cubs were on the road. Interesting. In the first night, every major leaguer said we could sleep in. <laughs> We don't have to be at the ballpark at 10 o'clock in the morning. And maybe just maybe stay out a little bit later. So you're telling me that that night had a lot of other implications <laughs> other than electricity. Some good, most not good. Michael McHenry, a one hopper taken care of by Escobar. A lot of folks still coming down Half Street. And in the lineup today, the second baseman left-handed hitting Daniel Descalso, who in this series is 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored, hitting 216 for the Rockies. Mainly used as a pinch hitter. Well, Max Scherzer just got a break on that pitch. That was down and in, and he got the strike call from Alan Porter, and he'll take it. And the hitter turning around, chatting with the umpire for a Good amount of time right there. A one pitch. Fastball is up and away. Descalso out of St. Francis High School, Mountain View, California. School that produced a couple of major leaguers, John Gall and a guy you know a little bit, FP, your buddy Eric Burns. Yeah. Swing and a miss. 94 away. Two balls, two strikes. Descalso went to UC Davis. Rocky signed him as a free agent early December. 243 career hitter. And Max Scherzer just blowing him away. He's fanned two of the last three Rockies now. Inside the numbers with STG, we've seen some whiffs in this series. So most strikeouts per nine innings against the West over the last couple of years. And the Marlins got some potentially bad news about young Mr. Fernandez, didn't they? Well, he just, his shoulder was hurt, and he came back to Miami from the road trip to see a doctor. And we're hoping he's okay. Absolutely. By the way, the Phillies leapfrogged the Marlins into fourth place last night. My, my old friend Pete McKinnon making a bid to be the Phillies manager just on an interim basis. They've had one of the best records in baseball out of the All-Star break. They're like 15 and 5, right? Yeah. How about that? Cal Parker in this series, 0 for 4. Max Scherzer just says, I'm going to blow everybody away here. Get the team back in the dugout. That's a nine pitch inning, 25 pitches in two innings. For the Nats, Zimmerman, Worth, and Desmond coming up. The whiff, he's fan three.
Employees, public school teachers, you can all receive up to 30% off Nationals tickets when verified through GovX. You can also get $10 credit at the ballpark to be used for food and beverage or merchandise. To be verified and purchase these special tickets, go to nationals.com slash GovX. Bottom of the second. Johan Flande, eight pitches, five strikes. Three grounders to start his day. But he has to face Ryan Zimmerman, who's two for four career against him. 91 with the heater right in there. So Ryan three games away from tying his own Nats record. For consecutive games with an RBI. That's inside. 11 for 40 since coming off the DL. Two homers now eight RBIs and seven of the 11 hits extra bases. Off speed good take two and one. Pretty good against the Rockies in 61 games. <laughs> and that's saying something. He's got great numbers against the Marlins, too. Ball three, it's skipped in the dirt. Inside the numbers, highest slugging percentage against the Rockies over the last five plus years now. And he's right there buying Holiday and Stanton. Ian Desmond on that list. Two of the five are Nats. Zimmerman scorches one to center. Going and going and gone. It just disappeared over the wall. And now it's seven games in a row with a run batted in. Somebody's heating up. I mean, ever since he came back off the DL, the timing has just been perfect at the plate. And there goes the no hitter. There goes the shutout. Ryan Zimmerman styles tying this game at one. Wow. The ball was crushed. And now Worth hits one a long way to right center. And it is gone. Over the scoreboard. Welcome back to the home run club, Jason Worth. And how about the noise in this yard right now? Can you have two guys come out at once for a curtain call? <laughs> what do you think Ian Desmond's thinking? Bunt single. He got a breaking ball that came back to get the outside corner. How about that display? And the Nats have 109 home runs and the lead 2-1 to one for Max Scherzer. Desmond right through Nolan Arenado and Desmond thinking about two and he's there. How about the excitement on these three swings. Let's see how they score that. I think they should give it a double he hit this ball right on the screws. Ian Desmond, five for his last 10 coming into that at bat, last three games. So make it six for his last 11. Three straight games without a strikeout. It's the first time he's done that since April 17th to the 19th. Ian Desmond, stay hot. And Nolan Arenado with a rare misplay. And they gave base. him a double. We, we got we got some work to do here. Let's go back and watch some home runs. It, it's Tater. It's the Tater Show. First Ryan Zimmerman, then Jason Worth. Oh. Johan Flande sticking. I just gave up back-to-back -back Taters on the same pitch. So I don't know. I mean, that's that's just a veteran move right there. We both hit home runs. Let's sit next to each other so we can both get on camera. <laughs> That is a solid move by those two. I don't know if the scoreboard jumped the gun. They put three hits up there. And now it says two hits and they've given Arenado an error. I saw scoring double when I looked up. Yeah, and I don't. 
so I don't know if the score changed it or somebody jumped the gun. But the Nats have a runner at second base nobody out and it's Wilson Ramos's job to either bring Desmond in or get him in a position to make it three nothing with another hitter Taylor to come. He's going to pull it hard. Arenado got that one. Four balls roasted in the inning. And now Taylor with Scherzer the next two batters. That was about as exciting as three at bats in a row have been all season long. Got the crowd into it early. Got Max Scherzer a lead. Zimmerman his eighth, Worth his third, Ryan's third since coming back, Jason's first. And here's Taylor hitting 379 with runners in scoring position. Well, the second home run might have been bigger just for the fact that you're wondering how Jason Worth's wrist is strength wise. Whenever Worth can go opposite field home run, that's a sign that he's absolutely locked in. So, a lot of good things about that Jason Worth swing. Ryan Zimmerman's been doing that since he's been back. Michael A. Taylor, 46 RBIs. Looking for his first base hit in this series. 0 oh and 2 now out of play right side. Well, this is good. The Nats have done this because the Mets have three runs at Tampa Bay now. Still very early there. And how about that? Nats hadn't gone back to back since they did it to King Felix in Seattle almost a year ago. That's where they're at the end of August. Yeah, that's the day that, or the night that Jordan Zimmerman stole all the headlines on the mound. Yeah. Taylor went. He's down two outs. First strike out for Flande. Well, Max Scherzer, he's had nine hits this year. By no means an automatic out at the bottom of the order. Boy, you know, watching him take batting practice the other day, he's so intense and tries to get something on every swing. He's so competitive during batting practice. He's not just up there playing home run derby. He That's actually, a pretty good whack at that one. He actually jumped in the cage his last round said game seven. Here we go. <laughs> and he was dead on serious. No joking. And he hit one off the wall left center field. Up the middle, knocked down by the pitcher. Looks like a hit. And uh, Ian Desmond had to do a little rerouting around the third baseman there. So the Nats have runners at first and third, two outs. Matt Williams sent Randy Nor to the phone. And I'm wondering what happened here with Ian Desmond and Nolan Arenado. That's. Nothing wrong with that. He's just standing there. Desmond went around him. No contact. And I'll tell you, Flande kept that ball from going into center field for an RBI. So the Nats have three hits in the inning. Max Scherzer's 10th of the year. Smell the knock. Do we have any expos of his face right the first, please? <laughs> Are his eyeballs still in his head? I want to order one of those right now to go. Here's Escobar who could make this a really big inning for the Nets. Hit the ball sharply to Reyes at short first time up and Flande misses. Seventh man to bat here in the second inning. Flande is making his 13th major league start as a starter. He has one career win his other out of the bullpen he's two and seven with a 466 ERA 27 games now and 13th start. He's on one career against the Nats in two starts but the ERA is around six.
good eye. Ooh, Escobar gets called for a strike. Looked like the pitch tailed outside, and he was surprised. I don't think you want anything to do with that pitch anyway. It's going to be a big strike zone today. Usually is when Alan Porter's behind the plate. Two and one. Well, if you get the lead, that's big, huh? That one heading up the middle, but Reyes gets behind it. And the Nats will strand a couple. But big time noise. And how about the two hitting approaches? Ryan Zimmerman, absolute straightaway center field. And then Jason Worth over the scoreboard, right center. 2 1 Nationals. Scherzer this year and he did a great job of it through his first 20 starts just 16 walks in those 20 outings but of late the walks have started to creep up for Scherzer three walks in each of his last two starts he said after his last one that he's been good this year at constantly being on the attack and getting count leverage but recently he's been falling behind in the count more lately not throwing as many first pitch strikes he says it's not a mechanical issue it's just kind of a mental thing he says I need to dial it in I need to get back to being aggressive getting ahead in the count getting those first pitch strikes then he feels the walk numbers will get back to where they were earlier on in the season well he had nine pitches in the second inning they were all fastballs so that's aggressive <laughs> and he watched Steven Strasburg last night throw 55 fastballs so, so a slider for a home run back to the heater Dan with the report NFP what we call in the business the tag of our coons.com sideline report when you're talking cars you're talking coons did I make the tag or did, I, tag. Miss, did I miss the tag no, replay shows you were uh, I got dead it. on good all right Johan Flande top of the third 0 for 8 this year 1 for 20 career Scherzer fastball high One guy at first, one guy in left, giving the Nets some power. That's in the zone, up, but not as high as the first one. Counts even 1 1. Shares are four in a row since the Arenado base hit. Three of those on strikes. Trying to bunt for a hit. Flande lays down a beauty, and he's done it. Ball checked up. Didn't look like it was going to go foul because it stopped. And that's his second big league hit. Was his foot on the plate? I watched his back foot jump around. No. Close. If your foot touches the plate, you're out. And it was very close. And just because that ball had so much hang time in the air, that steps down the first baseline. So I beat it. And he squared early. So leadoff man aboard for the Rockies. Escobar now has to play even with the bag on speedster Charlie Blackman. Who gets time very late from Alan Porter. Just as Scherzer was coming up. Out of the set position.
He's going to lay one down. It better go foul. It's not. Two bunt hits. Two on, nobody out. That was a beauty. There is nothing any third baseman in baseball can do about that one. A perfect bunt by Charlie Blackman. Oh. The starter will foul and his foot close to the plate. But it started to roll foul and actually came back. Watch the direction of the ball. It looks like it wants to push foul, and then it comes back onto the grass from the dirt and still going toward the middle of the infield. Some of the older ballparks like Wrigley and Fenway used to have big crowns on them. These ballparks are so fantastic with drainage and all that, they don't have to do that anymore. And just two really good bunts. It might be three. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing with Reyes coming in. Look out. He's going to rip one to the pull side for strike one. Just foul. So the Rockies have four hits already. A home run, three singles. Reyes, of course, tough to double up. Hit into four double plays all year. He's going to lay one down. That's a perfect sacrifice, Mark. Throw tailing into the runner just a bit. Zimmerman picked it off. 5-3. And now Gonzalez coming up. And do the Nets want to handle him? Arenado is a right-handed batter behind him. This will be interesting just to see how they approach Carlos. Early in the game, I say call Elias and find out when the last time three guys have bunted in a row in Major League Baseball. <laughs> if Carlos Gonzalez bunts, we really got a story. Suffice to say, I don't think it's a Colorado team. Yeah. Or any team. Look at that. Since June 1st, 20 home runs of his 24. So he got off to a slow power start. Up there, taking a big swing on 96. Well, he knows he's going to get a heater. He had a slider for a home run first time up. So basically eliminated that pitch, or at least sort of eliminated it. Scherzer might go to it later in the count. But obviously pitching for a strikeout in this situation. I want to jam in here. 96. So here's the home run in the first inning from Cargo. And it was a slider out over the plate. Check that. That's a curveball. It had just a little more loop to it, a little bit slower than a slider. Either way, it was belt high, and he's not missing those. And he's put two dents in that wall back there. Now it's 0-2. Well, Matt Scherzer, he's not wasting any time. He was in a hurry for the second out. Strikeout number four gets him just that. Well, I like Steven Strasburg last night. He's trusting his fastball all of a sudden. And there's been times this year, and really the only times that you've seen Max Scherzer get in trouble has been with a slider that didn't slide or a curveball that didn't curve. But when push comes to shove, you get beat with your best pitch, and all year long, Max Scherzer's fastball has been his best pitch. Huge out in the third, striking out one of the hottest hitters in baseball. Mercedes Benz with a three pitch see ya. And here's Zarenato, who singled up the middle first time up. He's another one of those guys, great with runners in scoring position. 385. Scherzer, who he gets the call on the inside edge. That can set a tone for an AB. There's some. Chirping in the Rockies dugout to the effect that he doesn't need any help. <laughs> 87 had him way out ahead. So five strikes in a row against. They're two most dangerous hitters. Well, this is the turn it up and notch Max Scherzer. You saw after strike three to Carlos Gonzalez. The elbows go out, the back pedal up the hill, get, give you the ball, let's do this, Max Scherzer thing. And now he's in an 0 2 count to Nolan Arenado. And fans on their feet here at Nats Park.
Time given. Ian Desmond contributing to that conversation. Well, that conversation may have been about switching up the signs, and as a middle infielder, you want to know that because you position yourself accordingly to off-speed and fastball. If it's a fastball, you kind of stay right where you are. If it's off-speed right when he starts his motion, you kind of get a lean going toward the hole, especially with a right-handed hitter up. He wants to know the signs. 0-2. Scherzer gets Arenado to go upstairs. 98. Two bun hits to lead off the inning, and then guess what? The ball never did lead the infield. Hashtag Nats Couch Cam, and you might see yourself on an upcoming broadcast that's brought to you by T Mobile. Rendon, Harper, Zimmerman, 2 3 4. Big game, early inning pitching by Max Scherzer. 27 pitches for his opponent, meanwhile, Flande, 18 strikes. Got Rendon on a good play by Nolan Arenado, first time up. Strike call. Like Taylor, Anthony looking for his first base hit against the Rockies. That one tailing away, one ball, one strike. Those two K's by Max Scherzer were just that's that's makeup plus stuff. And he threw pretty much the slider curve thing out the window through one change up to Arenado and the rest was just bring him the heat. Two one. Rendon takes a strike. Ray's got a run in the third so it's three one New York down in St. Pete. And that's a game and a half behind the Mets who finally lost one last night. Paul skips in three and two. Down to third for Arenado. 
Throw sailed on him a bit. Paulson pulled it in. One out. Inside the numbers with Bryce from STG. Where he ranks and uh, Bryce with three hits this weekend has passed Paul Goldschmidt who's down to 332 Buster Posey as well. So still first in home runs looking for that first one of this homestand and some ground to make up in the RBI race. No pressure Michael Taylor you know Escobar Anthony Rendon it's all you have to do is get on base for a triple crown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah spread the word among the bottom of the order in the first two. <laughs> It's going to be a new campaign called Runners for Bryce. <laughs> He's hit safely 16 of his last 17 games. It's on the inside corner. Hot fastball 1 1. Bryce hitting before the game 330 against left handed pitching. And the shift will take a hit away from him there, although that's near where a second baseman would usually play. So here come the home run guys. Tater Tater. First Ryan Zimmerman with number eight. That was a bomb. Straight away central. And then Jason Worth gives something up in the way. The patented backflip. It's nice to see that back. He's got something going on with his beard and hair combo. He shaved something, trimmed something. Tightened it up a little bit today. Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers, $500 for those two home runs to the Children's National Health System. So, Lexus, the pursuit of perfection as the Nats pursue the long ball. They've done it 109 times. Rockies have given up 125 home runs. Counts even to Ryan. 43 runs batted in in 252 at bats. So you do the math prorated over an entire season if Ryan could stay on the field for six months. It's been a problem for him the last four years. But he is so productive this season. You do the math. Well, that's, I'm, that's I'm a 100 RBI math. guy right there. I, I don't do math. If it's past my fingers and toes, I don't do it. I know you're an athlete, not a mathlete. That's right. You told me that. No mathletes here. Zimmerman, another high drive. See you later. Visiting the deepest parts of Nationals Park again. <laughs> He's hit some far ones in the last five years. That could be the winner winner chicken dinner. Few of those days like he had in Baltimore where he homered yeah. his first three at bats. That one disappeared. That was beautiful. That was in a dumpster out there beyond the center field fence. That's Ryan's 13th multi homer game and the 12th time he's done two. He enjoyed the one that at Baltimore, his only three homer game. Carp, he enjoyed that one a little bit. Why yeah. not? You know, uh, Somebody told me once that home run trucks can do wonders for plantar fascia. Yeah, they can. I've been saying all year long, he's a guy that can put a ball club on his back for a good month or so, and it is happening right now. 0 2 to Worth. Inside. Let's see it again, please. This is his second at bat, not his first. Yeah, he, yeah I'm, I'm checking that one out too for a second. That was a far tater. Super far. Worth on a changeup takes it outside, two and two. Where did it land? Show me, please. Wow. Just had enough tail on it to get into the seats. I thought it was headed for that back, the big cargo door out there. And now Worth continues to put on the right center field exhibition. So these two guys are four for four. With 13 total bases right now and three runs batted in. Zimworth. Ryan Wertherman. Zim. So, as mentioned, Ryan's 13th. 12th time he's done it with two. And the ball is making some loud noises today. Here's Ian Desmond.
He has hit safely 14 of his last 18 games. So I got up this morning, sprinted over to my Chia. Nothing. It's like day five, nothing. Maybe now that he's hit one, it'll start growing. Yeah. Green thumbs. They call that osmosis in science. It's nothing. I'm not, I'm, this is the first thing I do every morning, even before I make the coffee. Sprint over to my work, Chia. Crickets. Nothing. Not even a little green sprout. It's still the pasty seeds all over his face. <laughs> Don't worry. We are going away for 11 days. <laughs> yeah. It's either going to take over. If I the see place. that thing on the plane. <laughs> it's going to end up in some dumpster out at uh, Dulles. I'll put my key in the door when we get back from Colorado. There's going to be sprouts underneath. You'll have the a door. jungle. Or I, it's going to look how it looked this morning. One or the other. You'll be coming back to a jungle. Nothing. By the way, this all happens with two outs this inning. And not to be overlooked here, how hard Bryce Harper hit the ball. Right before Zimmerman's homer. 3 5 0 Nats, 1 4 1 Rockies. A lot of noise, bottom of the third. Desmond right off the end of the bat to the right side for Descalso. So the Nats will pick up another run. All the runs in this one via the long ball. Gonzalez for the Rockies, and since then, Zimmerman worth and Zimmerman again. Where that ball left, it's about 390 to right center, and it went about 40 feet more. Swing and a miss. First pitch, fourth inning. Ben Paulson, who struck out first time up. Max Scherzer, 38 pitches, 32 strikes. I mean, left-handers are just not reaching out what he's throwing, and right-handers aren't reaching up what he's throwing. Well, he's made some good adjustments in the course of this ball game. I mean, he's getting the fastball to the arm side away from lefties. Early on, he was pulling it across, really not getting that extension, kind of cutting off his release point. When you cut off your release point, you pull the ball across. Right now, he's really getting extended. Off speed pitch, he gets a fly ball. Desmond out, called off, good communication. Jason Worth. Well, between innings, as we do every day, we get up, we wave our caps, and we applaud for our wounded warriors and for their families. It's our DynCorp International Troop Recognition. And it's brought to you by DynCorp International, where we serve today for a better tomorrow. Not one day goes by in this ballpark 
when we don't honor our military. Here's McHenry, the former pirate, the Rockies' backup catcher. Michael ground ball to Escobar, first time up. Playing in his 54th ball game. This one high in the air, out to Michael A. Taylor. Outfielders appreciating a little bit of cloud cover right now. Well, let's get back from the road trip. August 27th, Thursday ball game against the Padres. will conclude that three-game sit. You can get a pet calendar. It's a good one, too. With a special ticket purchase, fans will receive a Nationals player pet calendar featuring photos of your favorite Nats player with their pets. Supplies are limited for details and special ticket information. Visit nationals.com slash pet day. I didn't see anybody with a, a picture of a goldfish. Descalso hits one a long way out to right center. And that ball is a home run. That's his fourth of the year. The 14th of his five-year career. And the Rockies are right back to within a run at 3-2. Unexpected power source at that part of the lineup. Nissan will track it. Fastball 93, Descasso all over it. And it was supposed to be probably about two or three inches more outside. Got some play, and Descasso was ready for it. And forget get him on, get him over, get him in today. Just hit him out. Solo home runs all over the place in this ball game. Yeah, five in the game. And it feels like the Nats are up eight to one. <laughs> now it's three to two. Here's Kyle Parker, the number eight hitter. This kid's got a lot of pop. <laughs> Playing in his ninth big league game this year. He's five for 24. But as I mentioned Friday night, fast tracked through the Colorado organization. Hitting over 80 home runs in his first four professional seasons. He's out of Clemson. One ball, two strikes. He didn't see that at Colorado Springs or Clemson, South Carolina. Solar by Descalso. 3 2 game. center field and this race would not at all be like Abe Lincoln's political career where he lost race after race after race before it became one of our great presidents ever I mean this was wire to ribbon 
Wow. These guys take that seriously. They really do. I think uh, Dan Coco found that out, didn't he? Yep. Ramos, Taylor, Scherzer, bottom of the fourth. First three innings, 49 pitches for Flande. 29 strikes and three solo home runs. Five hits total. Ramos skips back, but it's a strike. I guess the guys thought on getaway day here, they'd give us a little preview of a week and a half from now at Coors Field. That yeah, ball's fine here. Ramos the other way on a pitch that was close. Wilson last five games, six hits, seven runs batted in. Did a lot of damage against the D-backs. He's one for eight with a walk, but two RBIs in this series. Ball inside, says Alan Porter. Flande tried to buzz him again. Well, Flande's walked off the mound three or four times today on two strike pitches, thinking he had a called third. And none of them have been strikes. Ramos has been pulling the ball more lately. That pitch away, he takes it right out that way. Still 3 1 at Tampa Bay Mets on top, bottom of the fifth inning at Tropicana Field. Three and two on a pitch low. Have a look at the hole at that from Mercedes Benz here. Couple outside, couple inside, couple down. And one bounced to third for Arenado. Michael A. Taylor coming up, number eight spot, and Dan has more. Bob, we've noticed at times this season that Michael A. Taylor chokes up on the bat, sometimes a good couple inches on that bat. I asked him why he does that, and he said, if I feel myself cheating during a swing, I do it to remind myself to stay short, to stay on the ball. He says it's a feel thing. It's based on a previous at-bat sometimes or a previous swing. He'll even make that adjustment mid-at-bat sometimes and choke up on the bat a couple inches. And FP, what exactly does the hitter mean when he says he feels he's cheating? Well, just like he has to start his swing early to get to an inside fastball. When you say he's cheating to get to the fastball, you feel like you got to really open up your front side and your hips to get to the mid-90s fastball in the inner half of the plate. So you look for it in there and start the whole process earlier. You open up your front shoulder earlier. And it makes you really vulnerable to anything on the outer half or anything slow and away. It's ball two. That's a term you often hear from guys late in their careers yeah. when they're trying to get to 90 plus. Well, you know, just guys that, and if you start to cheat to get to that, it's a bad feeling. It's a helpless feeling if you can't get to a fastball in the inner half because that's where you do damage as a hitter. Fastball's in, turn and burn, you know, drop the barrel on that and to the pull side and if you can't get there it gets in your head and you're like okay I got to get everything going that's what cheating to a fastball in is 3-1 and another ball well hit to Arenado is there any other defender out there <laughs> evidently they teach throughout the Rockies organization pitch ground balls to third PNC Bank for the achiever in you young Mariano Rivera Yes, the great Mariano's son. Last six games with those Auburn double days. Ah, three saves, good ERA. Not striking out a ton of guys, but just getting outs. Fourth round pick, and he's only 5'11", 155 at the age of 21. Obviously has a great arm and unbelievable pedigree. Here's Max Scherzer. 
The pitchers by the way combined are two for two today. So Max gets a nasty breaking ball there. I mean what does Mariano Rivera's son know about closing. Yeah. Okay. His dad probably tells him stuff. He probably says, never went to the ballpark. Whatever dad. <laughs> rolls his eyes. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> like every other son <laughs> in the world. <laughs> We go to the fifth inning. Pitcher coming up for the Rockies. Strikeouts after three bunts in a row. Base hit bunt by Flande, a base hit bunt by Blackman, a sacrifice by Jose Reyes. Here come the big boys. Cargo, strike three on a fastball. Nolan Arenado, strike three on a fastball. So in the second and third inning, 19 of Max Scherzer's 21 pitches were fastballs. He's going to number one. Time for Toyota Keys for Kids, DC area Toyota dealers. Going to donate 37 bucks for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. By the way, 17 batters, 48 pitches total in four innings, 2.8 pitches per batter. We talked of his aggressiveness earlier. Two o pitch and Flande takes a strike. Got a second big league hit last time up, a bunt down the third base side. Tries another one, pops it up. Ryan Zimmerman. That ball's out of here. Bunts are carrying well. Top of the order now, Blackman and Reyes. So people are tweeting me pictures of their chias. And oh. apparently I put way too many seeds online. I mean, I emptied the whole darn packet out on him. Because, I mean, if you look at Jason Worth, he's pretty hairy. So I figured they give you a whole packet of chia seeds. Use the whole packet. So I smeared stuff everywhere, and I probably just overdid it. Shocking. Hmm. I was trying to make it look like that. You know, in high school, there was always one guy who blew up the lab. Yep. There's Blackman one for two. Why'd they give me so many seeds if they didn't want me to use them? Yeah, that's true. Give me less amount. You know, if you send that back in, you might get a pocket fisherman. I don't know what that is. Not available in stores. Here's out of order. That's up and away. One ball, one strike. They, they could have given me one quarter of the seeds they gave me. That would have been good. That is a late swing on 96.
And Charlie Blackman can't get over the top of that one. Here's the sun coming into play, but Rendon sees it, and he has it for the second out. This one not quite as airy. If you can get an Anthony Rendon Garden Gnome on Tuesday, August 25th at 7.05. That'll be against the Padres. They open up a three-game set. Check out hashtag Rend Gnome and the Nationals' Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Follow his adventures. Go to nationals.com to purchase your tickets today. That'll be a good one. No seeds necessary. Here's Reyes, 0 for 1 with a sacrifice bunt. And a ball slapped out to left. Worth approaching the line in the seats and not able to get there. But he did do a good job of sliding safely on that track. Pretty good effort by Jason Worth. That ball's a foot closer to the foul line. He makes the play, but because it was so close to the fence, he had to go into a slide. And when he went into the slide, it slowed him down. He couldn't get there. But a great effort by Worth, nonetheless, trying to take a page out of Bryce Harper's book yesterday, just off the tip of his glove. Well, Max Scherzer. Lately, 0-2 counts than more than half of the last nine hitters he's faced. He is dealing. Then he goes in the dirt with that breaking ball, 79. Shirts are looking for his 12th win today. Career against the Rockies in five starts, one and three with a 399 earn run average. Hasn't faced him since he struck out 12 of them back in June of 12. That's in the dirt. Ramos can't find it. Reyes might beat it. And he does. And that'll get Carlos Gonzalez to the plate after a two out strikeout. A pretty good change up here by Max Scherzer and Reyes way out in front. And Ramos goes to the backhand and kind of turns his body to the side. You see how he kind of tried to glove that baseball? And it actually hit the mask of Alan Porter. They give him a pass ball on that. Yeah, if, if you turn your glove over and drop to your knees and use your chest protector right there, the ball kicks out in front. You simply pick it up and throw it to first base. Tried to glove it, didn't work. Well, that adds to the stress in this inning in a one run game. Jose Reyes has 18 stolen bases this year. In his big league career, he has 473. Scherzer goes to work and misses up and in. Well, that's not just going to cost Max Scherzer extra pitches. That's going to cost him red line pitches in a 1 1 ball game against Carlos Gonzalez. He's going to have to reach back and go to his A plus stuff right here, right now. Reyes running, pitch up. Good throw, and they've got him with Carlos Gonzalez in the batter's box. Jose Reyes has gunned out by Wilson Ramos. I wonder if Max Scherzer heard runner and threw this ball up, but Wilson Ramos making up for the non-block on strike three with a seed right to Ian Desmond for the third out. Nice throw.
36 this year. So he's right around 30 to 31 percent on those caught stealings. He's rehydrating. We go bottom of the fifth and here's Escobar. Three two nets. That was big with Carlos Gonzalez in the batter's box. And that'll be picked off by Johan Flande for the first out. You know, oftentimes veteran pitchers, when they have a good base runner on in a one run ball game and they're thinking about keeping them close, will hear the first baseman or the middle infielders yell runner in the middle of their delivery. And they have the ability to throw a pitch that clears the catcher and is an easy pitch for the catcher to throw on. I wonder if that was the case right there with Max Scherzer because he threw that fastball up almost like a modified pitch out to Wilson Ramos, gave him a clear lane to throw, and they got Reyes. I mean, it's quick thinking. It's, it's hard to do on the fly, but sometimes veteran guys can do it. They hear runner, okay, I'm going to throw a high fastball, almost like a pitch out, right? Ramos with a perfect throw to get Reyes. That was pretty. And I think you can only do that if the fastball is called. You can't do that if he's throwing a slider, a curve, or a changeup. But if number one's put down, do you hear runner throw that thing high, maybe even a little bit away? 1-1 one, one to Rendon, and that's low. Two balls, one strike. By the way, good news. Ray's got a couple. It's a 3-3 game down in St. Pete now. Rendon rips it. One hop, Jose Reyes. That familiar sidearm whip over to first. Two quick outs. Well, I thought it was going to be salad, but it's style. Text the word style to 29292 for your chance to win a meet and greet with Anthony Rendon and a $25 haircuttery gift card brought to you by Haircuttery, home of the smile back guarantee. No small print, just big smiles. Style to 29292. Hmm. Right-hander Scott Oberg for the Rockies. As we mentioned earlier, Flan Day has only made 13 big league starts. He works out of the bullpen at times. And so not a lot of pitches for him today. Taya Bryce is going to go the other way and just hit one right where the shortstop would usually be. He has his fourth hit of the series, and he's now hit safely. Bryce Harper has in 17 of 18 games. Well, here we go, folks. Round three. First time up, eighth home run of the year. Second time up, ninth home run of the year. Third time up, he's going to see a different pitcher because here comes Walt Weiss out to the mound. I tell you, he got Oberg ready in a hurry. He walked out of the dugout as soon as Harper reached first base. And Flande is done after four and two thirds, as Walt Weiss doesn't want to see this game slip away. This call to the bullpen for Scott Oberg, packaged by the UPS store. Your one stop shop for all your small business needs. Let us handle your mailbox service needs. We love logistics. Two thousand thirteen, Chris Tillman, Ryan Zimmerman, Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Two outs first inning solo. 
third inning, or rather fourth inning. Roger Bernardina had just homered. Zimmerman goes back to back. And then in the fifth inning, also against Tillman, right center, three home runs, four RBIs his first three times up. But alas, Steve Johnson would strike him out in the seventh inning. So here's Scott Oberg's second appearance of this series. Yeah, fastball 95, slider 84, curveball 78, changeup 88. Four pitch guy, 39th appearance. Right handers 287. He's given up nine home runs. He got Zimmerman on a 6 4 ground ball here Friday night. First career matchup. Runner aboard, two outs. Zimmerman smashes one to Arenado. And he takes care of that at the very hot corner. Five innings in the scorebook at Nationals Park. It's all homers. 3-2 Washington. And how about this rotation? Steven Strasburg knocked four tenths of a run off his ERA last night. Everybody else doing their parts in terms of not giving up many runs. And young Mr. Ross, that strikeout to walk ratio is getting crazy. The natural throw Geo, Joe Ross, and Jordan Zimmerman at Los Angeles. Foul ball by Cargo. They will face. Brett Anderson, Zach Grinke, and Clayton Kershaw in that three-game series. All night games, so stay up late with us from Dodger Stadium. Good to see Vin Scully tomorrow. I'm excited about that. Always the highlight for us up in the booth. He'll remember all of our names. I'm convinced he reads our bios before we come to town. Probably remembers them from years ago. He's just amazing. Well, he doesn't remember mine from when I was a Dodger because I never played. He still call you Sant Angel. He still calls me Bat Boy. <laughs> What's up, Bat Boy? Yeah. Yeah. Vinny's not that mean. He wouldn't do that. Come on. Joe Ross currently possesses the highest strikeout to walk ratio through a pitcher's first seven career starts in modern Major League Baseball history since 1900. To your point about strikeouts to walk. How about that? Amazing. And that ball is blasted. Now you know, and that's caught in the second level out there. Now you know how big it is to have Carlos Gonzalez batting with men on base. But he gets a solo and ties this game. So he's gone Ryan Zimmerman this afternoon and vice versa. 3 3 game. 
Wow. There's been a few wow home runs here today. This one takes the cake, though. And you see Scherzer just missing, what, by three, four inches? They wanted that on the black away, maybe it off the plate. It got too much plate. And who's hotter than Cargo right now? Right down the middle on the Nissan pitch track. And here's Zerinato. Be careful here. He was trying to put him on top. That's his 12th home run since the All-Star break. 12. And uh, what's that like? Uh, 25. Now he's got 21 since the first of June. Now that's crazy. And look out. Carlos Gonzalez is four home runs behind Bryce Harper and two behind Nolan Arenado with Stanton and Frazier in there. Boy, when that leg kick is right and the timing's right, it's just tough to get him out. I don't know what the Rockies would require to move him. But there might be a couple of GMs saying to themselves at the deadline, maybe we should have given up so-and-so for that. Swing and a miss. Great breaking ball away. And that's Max Scherzer with his eighth strikeout. Uh, look at the leg kick, the head stain. Still a little drift to it, but like I said earlier, when you eliminate off speed with a home run and you're a good fastball hitter, that's all you're looking for. He knew he wasn't going to see anything with the slider curve attached to it. He got a fastball and an upper deck shot. For Cargo, his second of the game. Wow. Did that Nats fan really think he was going to get a ball today with that glove? Taylor racing, racing, can't get it. Ben Paulson hits it over his head. Ball caroms around out there. And the Rockies have two extra base hits here in the sixth inning. I think Michael Taylor might have gotten fooled initially on this ball. You can see him at the top of the screen. Kind of takes a jab step in and then goes, uh oh, that ball's hit hard. Would have been a great play if he got a good read on it. Short hops the fence, good effort. But a one out double for the Rockies. And they're starting to make the adjustment on the fastball. They've out hit the Nats seven to six. McHenry ground ball to third, fly ball to center. So the lead run in scoring position with one out. No way to reach that 87 just veering outside. What's the record for solo home runs in a game? I don't know. Well, we've got six of them. And maybe another category solo home runs in a game that accounted for all the runs. A lot of baseball yet to be played, but this has been very unusual. That's a great fastball at the knees. No balls, two strikes. Or three per side. <laughs> when both sides has a player with two. Yeah, go. Never happened. Just a guess. Max took a little bit off to get the foul tip. So look no further than Gonzalez and Descalso for all of their scoring. Cargo number 24 in the first, number 25 a moment ago. Here in the sixth, Descalso's with two outs in the fourth, his fourth of the year. He has McHenry 0 2. Fastball up. Just kind of rotating that bat with his hands. Waiting. And not able to get to that one. Number nine for Max Scherzer. Two outs. Mercedes Benz will track it. 
Yeah, good location on the fastball right where Wilson Ramos wanted it. You see all those fastballs. Well, sliders down the way, fastballs down the way. This one perfectly placed for strike three. Daniel Descalso, the next hitter. He's the unexpected home run guy. Hitting him with the big boys today, Zimmerman, Worth, and Gonzalez. But he sure got good wood on that ball back in the fourth. So a visit by Steve McCaddy, and now it's Scherzer against the number seven hitter. Well, do you want Descalso or do you want Kyle Parker? And that's what that discussion was about on top of giving him a little bit of a breather. Yeah, which one which one do you feel more comfortable going after and if you do pick this guy, So what do we want to do here? It's a contact line drive lefty against a free swinging power right handed guy yeah. Change up go some change up see if he fishes if he doesn't maybe put him on and go for the right hander a footnote on Scherzer 16 home runs given up this year 12 of them have been solos Off speed again. I might just put him on right now. He's not. Matt Williams holding up four. This will be Max Scherzer's first walk of the day and the first walk in the entire game. One of the things that kept Flande in the game for Colorado is that he didn't walk anybody. The Rockies had walked 12 nationals in the first two games combined in this series. That has to be his first intentional walk this year. <laughs> it would be interesting to know how many times Descalso has been walked intentionally ever. No, I mean Scherzer's. Oh, yeah. Uh, he don't yeah. pitch around anybody. So here we go. Three game series with the Dodgers. As we mentioned, solid pitching matchups. Anderson and Geo, Ross and Grinky, Jordan Zimmerman and Clayton Kershaw, and then four at AT&T Park against the Giants. That ball hit into left, and Parker will one hop it to Worth. Jason drops it, and the Rockies take the lead. Plus, Descalso ends up at third base. Could be an RBI single and an error. Allowing the trail runner to get all the way over. Well, it looked like a slider and it was out over the plate. Parker caught it out front. Jason Worth was going to have a chance against Ben Paulson. And on the transfer, can't get a grip. It would have been close at home with a good throw. Brandon Barnes will pinch hit. For Oberg, who threw one pitch to get Zimmerman last inning. And to this point, no error given to Jason Worth. Scorer figuring Descalso was heading for third. That's a good slider to Barnes, who faces Max Scherzer for the first time. Fastball. Trying to keep it a 4 3 ball game. And swing and a miss. He strikes out three batters in the inning. But a homer, a double, and a base hit put the Rockies on top. 4 3.
national season plan holders get it done for next year. If you do it by August 31st, you also secure extra postseason tickets for this season. Visit nationals.com slash renew for all renewal and postseason ticket details. On to the bottom of the six, and the Colorado Rockies keep pecking away and at times blasting away against Max Scherzer. Here's their third pitcher, 40-year-old Rafael Betancourt. 40-year-old, 40 40th appearance. 5-3-5 yeah. ERA, 34 strikeouts, 9 walks. Only giving up three home runs this season, but opponents hitting 268 against the Rockies' right-hander. And how about Jason Worth with a couple of knocks today? The first one, a big fly. Right center field. His third of the year, bat flip. That's a good sign for Matt Williams' ball club if that guy's hitting the ball that way with power. Yeah, he wasted no time after the Zimmerman homer. First pitch, gone. And against Betancourt career, Jason Worth is 0 for 5. This guy was in the minor leagues all of last year. Was hurt, didn't pitch a full season. There he is, back in the big leagues. Broke in with Cleveland in 03. Rafael Betancourt. His whole career with the Indians and the Rockies. I might be wrong, but you get the feeling this one's far from over. <laughs> I think you're right. Ballpark playing small today. Nats having some quality at bat throughout the lineup all day long. And the Rays just went up four to three, so this one big. That's a good take by Jason Worth on a breaking ball off speed that was a strike for a while. It dove, he laid off. Yeah, fastball curveball change. Fastball averages 91 with a lot of cut to it. Three and one. Jason, two RBIs in this series. Desmond waiting. He's driven in two this weekend. Worth at a sack fly Friday night and his third home run here today. Good at bat. Vintage at bat by Jason Worth with that knowledge of the strike zone and the ability to see lots of pitches. Leadoff man on sixth inning. So the Nats box from the standpoint of scoring, it's all Zimmerman and Worth in the middle. Bryce Harper, a base hit with two outs in the fifth inning. And Worth, of course, now a perfect day with the single and the walk after the home run. Ian Desmond career, two for five against Rafael Battencourt. Showed bunt. And that got Arenado on the move. Starting to lock it in last 19 games. That's including today. That's a potent bat in the number six spot. I think the obvious numbers are, are good for Ian Desmond, but the three walks in the last three games is what I'm focusing in on. Why? Well, he's seeing the ball. He's getting into hitters counts. I mean, he went two or three months without getting into a hitters count just because he was swinging at the first pitch all the time, following off a lot of baseballs. And, you know, every at bat 0-2-1-2 is a rough way to go for any big league hitter. Now he's starting to get a little count leverage and taking advantage. Way outside, ball three. Bettencourt digging a hole here in the sixth inning with a one run lead. Oops. 
three and one. So the Orioles hit seven solo shots by themselves <laughs> on June 16th against the Phillies. Homer away. I guess it would figure in either of those two yeah. ballparks, doesn't it? That's crazy. Franchise record. Wow. And we're still checking on the six solo shots, three with each team, and all those other subcategories we were talking about. Took a shot at 89 upstairs, and now the count's full. I like it. 3 1 count. You're looking for something up. Take a big rip at it. Back with 89 and 90 to get the strikeout. Mercedes Benz will track it. Yeah, went 3 2 fastball, 90, just a little bit of cut to it at the end. And to a pull swing, Ian Desmond just ran out of bat. A little bit late, a little bit underneath. Wilson Ramos. He's pulled it twice, ground balls to third. Outfield really around to right center with the center fielder Blackman. And now the count 0 2. So after a walk and a 3 0 count, Bettencourt getting his inning back in order here. Fastball on 0-2 with the runner. Jason Worth on the move. Yeah, got a great jump too. Obviously, Wilson Ramos can't take a pitch in a two-strike count, but Jason Worth with a big time jump right there had that base stolen. Felipe Rivero. Max Scherzer's thrown 84 pitches in six innings. So Wilson's six hits have been very productive on the homestand. Just one in this series against Colorado. And the 0-2 well hit right center. And it is up against the scoreboard. Worth approaching third. Ramos stops at first. And the time runs at third base. Well, that oh, ball was single. That ball was powdered, but Wilson Ramos, you'd think, would be on second on this one. Nice inside out swing, and he thought the way the ball is carrying today that he got him, and whoops, he didn't. And he represents the go ahead run, and he should be on second base. Yep. Good read by Jason Worth. He was thinking about scoring, wasn't at the top of the fence with that bobble. Ramos is on second easy. Well, he's on second easy either way. Now Michael A. Taylor needs to elevate. Max Scherzer is on deck. 
And he's going to walk back right now and be replaced by Clint Robinson. You know, Wilson has watched a few home runs this year that just got out of the ballpark. He's actually joked about it after the game. He thought he got him right there, and he didn't. And that ball, foul tip, deflected off the catcher and caught on a fly by Clint Robinson. A lot of ways Michael Taylor can score Jason Worth without getting a hit here. Even a ground ball with his speed, unless he hits it really hard at somebody. Sack fly. Base hit bunts there. Arenado's back. There's a lot of ways to score Worth. He went. I think he's just asking for some help. Alan Porter called that all by himself. I think Matt Williams would like some help on that one, too. Check it out from the side. Did he go? Didn't look like it. That's why he just asked the first base up. What's the big deal? And Taylor able to take that one. Boxed down by McHenry. With Worth coming down the line. One ball and two strikes for that tying run 90 feet away. Taylor with a good rip. at bats for you you're thinking to yourself get something elevated hit it hard you want to keep it simple there's a lot going on your mind's going a million miles an hour and then your game plan changes from get something up hit it hard stay in the middle of the field to just put it in play and fight and battle like throw all game plan out the window with two strikes and now it's just a dog fight I'm trying to put the ball in play any way I can with the tying run on third and one out 2-2 two -two pitch Taylor slaps it down to third. Arenado comes home. The throw hits Jason Worth, and the game is tied. Heads up base running by Jason Worth. A great play by Arenado. It's the only play he had. Wasn't going to turn a double play, but why is it great base running by Jason Worth? He runs into Michael McHenry's glove. He looks over his shoulder. How many guys do that, first of all? So there's awareness by Worth that the play is coming to the plate. Watch him peek over his shoulder. He looks over his shoulder. He knows the play is coming. What does he do? He runs right into the catcher's glove. He knows he's going to be out. So what do you do when you know you're out? You run right into the glove. Ball hits him in the back. Tie ball game. Heads up base running by Worth right there. That's a clinic. First of all, to look over your shoulder to know the play is coming home. A lot of guys don't do that. Hey, there's a freeze. He's looking over his shoulder. Here comes the ball. You see him just veer inside to McHenry right there, and that's the difference. He stayed in the baseline, ran into the glove. Tie ball game. Now, Clint Robinson will try to put Max Scherzer in a position to win the game as he hits for the Nats starter. When you hear the term, he's a good base runner, that's a perfect example right there. It just doesn't mean he goes first to third on balls, he reads base hit, little things. Little things like that are what separate great base runners from good base runners. That's a fielder's choice and an error. Good job by Michael Taylor to put the ball in play, too. Guy that has a, a tendency to strike out, does a nice job with two strikes of putting the ball in play. Ken Robinson in the series, one for four with a walk. 
Seems like he hardly ever plays a game without getting at least one hit. He's five for 23 as a pinch hitter with two RBIs. Because of the error call, no RBI for Taylor. But a good job on a two strike count to put the ball in play with some velocity off that bat. See, I think that should be an RBI because how, how can you assume that the throw was going to beat worth the tag will be applied? You're, you're assuming a good throw has him. That should be an RBI. Robinson right off the end of the bat. Two balls, two strikes. I mean, how, how do you know that throw was going to be worth? And how do you know the tag was going to be applied? How do you know that he wasn't going to slide around it? There's a lot of things you don't know. And just assuming that you can't give that an error. Well, you can give it an error, but you can't give it an RBI. I think it's just a straight fielder's choice RBI personally. Two two to Robinson. Target away. And a fastball out there strikes him out. Two down. You know Escobar. Escobar facing Betancourt for the first time. Righty righty matchup and they have him played the other way in the outfield. A rare series for Escobar with no hits. But a couple of walks and now left hander Boone Logan as the Rockies look ahead Escobar Rendon get aboard he'll be ready for Harper outside edge 1 1. Well, a lot of right side of the infield for you know Escobar. Descalso up the middle, huge hole on the right side. Guy that likes to hit the ball right where nobody's standing. And Bencourt's been working him away. Rubber game of the three game series. Seesaw affair here. Rockies took the lead, the Nats right back at him. Tell you, when you're trying to get a shutdown inning and you walk the leadoff guy like Betancourt did with Worth, makes for a long frame eventually. Two on to Escobar, really jamming the plate here. Yeah, he's trying to go that way. Two two with two outs. Got to the fastball up. Next didn't score in the top of the eighth at Tampa Bay. It's still four three race. That's trying to retake the lead here. Escobar's driven in 33 runs. Swing and a miss on 91 away. Betancourt strikes out a couple to get out of a big time jam. Next, tie it into the seventh.
Home of the smile back guarantee, no small print, just big smiles. Everyone's seeing lots of homers here today. Entertaining ball game, Sunday at the yard. Beautiful day for baseball. Why wouldn't you smile, Carp? It's a great place to be on a day like this, man. Top of the seventh inning. Felipe Rivero in a big time Holden situation here. 4 4 ball game. Second appearance of the series. Had a long ninth inning, 21 pitches here on Friday night. Didn't give up a run, but a double and a walk, a couple of strikeouts. He was out there a long time. He did retire Charlie Blackman on a fly ball to center. Inside ball one Escobar on the grass at third seventh inning underway. Casey, Casey Jansen. Jansen are getting hot. So a no decision for Max Scherzer. But the Nats did get him off the hook with that run in the sixth. Max threw 84 pitches 63 strikes. Six innings eight hits four runs. His only walk intentional struck out. 10. Whistling fastball of beauty. It was Scherzer's seventh double digit strikeout game of the year and the first for him since the no hitter when he struck out 10 Pirates. Nine Diamondbacks last time out. Fly ball to center. It is deep. Taylor back, looking, jumping. He's got it! Right at the top of the wall. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Gio Gonzalez with the standing ovation. Most of the fans here at Nats Park with a standing ovation. And watch how far Michael Taylor goes for this. Times his jump perfect and might have brought back a home run. It was going to be close. This will show it right here. But what a play by Michael Taylor. And I'm going with, yeah, he just kept this ball game tied. From batter's eye cam, looked like he saved a homer. Jose Reyes next. Man can play some center field and cover some ground. Reyes 0 for 2 with a sacrifice. Batting right handed now. You think that all major league padded fences are soft, but, but look at all the poles of the post back here. If you hit those just right, you can feel them, especially the ones going vertical, the big ones in the middle. So, yeah, you're looking as a fan, you're saying, oh, yeah, there's padded fences, man. Those poles can get you. They hurt. Bryce Harper battling the sun, doesn't see it, and it falls right next to him. He could not find it. Sun coming in from that third base side, and Reyes is on second base. Yeah. I always say it. It doesn't matter if you have... Glasses on, eye black, whatever. When the ball's right in the sun, there's absolutely nothing you can do as a defender. Except for hope you don't get hit in the coconut. And look at Bryce. He's trying, but he's looking right into the sun. He has no idea, and he's hoping it doesn't hit him in the face, and he had to bail. Hmm. Speed guy on second. Here's Gonzalez. Lefty, lefty matchup. It is a brutal sun field here on Sunday afternoons this time of the year. And Rivero recovers with a good fastball to Gonzalez, who homered twice off Max Scherzer. Hitting 167 against lefties this year, 15 for 90, and that's why Matt Williams is choosing to pitch to him with first base open and one out. And maybe Jansen for Arenado, we'll see. 167. Up the middle, and Rivera spears it underhand to Zimmerman. Great reaction play by the rookie. Two outs. Matt and Randy Noor having a little chat, and Matt's coming out. 
Well, good play right here by Felipe. One hot bullet right back to him. Who knows what happens if that gets by him. Did a nice job of looking the runner, Reyes, back to second, flipping to first. Huge out here in the seventh. Casey Jansen for Aaron Nato. When we come back in a moment, Felipe close to a 1 2 3 inning. Tough hitter on deck. Ball game going on here at the yard on a Sunday afternoon, all tied up at four. And you say you want some solo home runs? Well, you got them, folks. Here comes all six. First of all, Cargo got the party started, the solo cater party started. Then Ryan Zimmerman, Jason Worth, back to back in the second. Then Zim with his ninth home run, his second of the day in the third. And Descalso with a solo shot. And he Carlos Gonzalez with his second, an upper deck shot to right center field. Ball flying here at Nats Park on a Sunday. Nolan Arenado 0 for 1 career against Casey Jansen. Casey, one appearance Friday night, came on to get one hitter in the seventh. That was Nick Hundley after the Rockies scored a run against Jordan Zimmerman. Not a lot of runners inherited, but he hasn't let any of them touch home. Boy, now that he's back and healthy, he's become a huge cog in this bullpen. Outside, 1-1. One, one. Escobar right on the line. He sees it, but then Desmond called it. Wow. Exciting times. Not in a good way for outfielders. And the Nats are out of that jam. It's our Hyundai seventh inning stretch. Oh, man. Send some of that up here. Enjoy it. With the umbrella, of course. Let's go, Dad.
transmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. This one tied at four as we cruise to the bottom of the seventh inning. A lot of see you laters here today for the Nats, so I thought I'd throw on my Bob Carpenter see you later t-shirt in honor of all the home runs hit today here at the ballpark. And it's a great shirt. I finally got one. It looks a lot like Jade Leno to me with that chip. It does. It looks like you're hosting the Tonight Show, but hey, see you later. It's a great t-shirt. I finally got one. Thank I'm you, Palmer Diaz. How you doing? Well, anyway, thanks for wearing it. I mean, we just got ours today. So I, I'm speechless. Well, you should have had yours on, too. But I guess you're saying see you later a lot today. Yeah, we have enough home runs. Although a couple against these guys would be all right. Down the stretch, Boone Logan. Nats have seen him before. And he will take over. Against Rendon, Harper, and Zimmerman in the bottom of the seventh inning. One more see you later is all we need out of you. All right. One I'd more. like a couple of guys on base, though, to be honest about it. Anthony Rendon still looking for his first base hit of the series. Great crowd. By the way, 33,157 today. The three game series with the Rockies draws 103,894 for an average of over 34,600 per game. Well done again, Nats fans. 30-year-old Boone Logan against Anthony Rendon. Nets first saw Logan with Atlanta. Second year with the Yankees, or rather the Rockies. He was with the Yankees for a while. That one comes right across the plate to the inside edge. Nasty. Yeah, two pitch guy, fastball slider. Actually throws the slider more than he does the fastball. Fastball average in 92. He's been a situational guy a lot in his career. Good arm, though. Rendon faces him for the first time. And there's the heater, 93 low. Yeah, all the way on the first base side of the the rubber, and he's stepping across his body, just kind of a crossfire guy. Coming at you from second base, basically. In there. Takes one that evens the count 2 2. Right handed shift on the infield. Something you hardly ever see. And Rendon's going to hit a line drive that nobody can get to. It'll be cut off by Parker. At least he attempted to. And Rendon a double either way. Great swing by Anthony. And that is huge for his first hit this series. You know, funny about that is Anthony Rendon was walking to the plate. You heard somebody down right by home plate yell, Tony, two bags. <laughs> and he does it. A leadoff double here in the bottom of the seventh tie. Ball game, game on. And look at that ball have a little hook to it. Do you see that right when it got out toward the outfield grass kind of ran back toward the gap and you're thinking maybe three but a good decision by Anthony Rendon to stop at second base. Now it's up to Bryce Harper to get him to third at least. And this might be a tough guy for Bryce to pull. He's going to be stepping right at him maybe even a little bit behind Bryce with that crossfire action. Boy up he then you look out there and there's only one guy in the left side of the infield. So they're pitching or they're playing to where they really don't want Bryce to hit the ball. He's going to square and bunt 
and then go big time butcher boy and swing away. Well, he showed Bunt early and then tried to get everybody thinking Bunt. Harper facing Logan for the first time. I think this would be Logan's last hitter. They got John Exford working. Harper pulling off the breaking ball. Now the battle begins. Big time. It's just a hard guy to stay in there on him and get a ball the right side. I say take care of yourself with two strikes. Don't try to pull the ball here. Just hit it wherever. You're an RBI guy. You tried a couple of times. Just hit now. Got him. And the catcher, McHenry, took an extra look down to Rendon before he threw that ball to first. One out. It's time for your T-Mobile fan of the game. It's Debbie Bosher. You tweet your strongest fan photo. Hashtag Matt's Couch Gab. Look at the fam. Checking out the ball game with the selfie stick. I like it. I'm usually not a big fan of the selfie stick, but that is a great picture, you guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. So Walt Weiss has a couple of things going on here. Coming out of the dugout is DJ LeMayu. Looks like Jose Reyes is leaving. And, of course, a new pitcher. They've been warming the right-hander, Axford. Ryan Zimmerman having a huge day. It's a big-time right-handed matchup coming up. of the seventh inning with a runner at second one out DJ LeMayu comes into play second base he'll be hitting ninth the shortstop was second baseman Daniel Descalso and then hitting second and pitching will be the right hander John Axford it was interesting the other night he has the most saves on the team but Walt Weiss brought him in in the eighth inning right after the Rockies had taken a 5-4 lead. So that was the save Friday night, really, the eighth inning. Oh, Walt Weiss putting his best relievers in high leverage situations. And when you're facing 3-4-5, 2-3-4, in need of the opponent's order, he's going to Axford, who has a big fastball, 96, slider 89. Curveball to go with it at 79. And here's the offensive star, one of the offensive stars of this game, Ryan Zimmerman, the other one, Cargo. Ryan Zimmerman career against the right hander a base hit in four trips and a base on balls. So LeMayu, the second baseman really playing Ryan up the middle right behind the umpire. That'll help them also keep Rendon close. Ryan two homers against Johan Flande then a first pitch grounder against Scott Oberg to end the fifth inning. Oh, Axford very slow to the plate on that one. Anthony Rendon can steal third if he wants. Mets lose. 
Nets could be back to within a half game. The Rays held on to win that game 4 3. So they win that weekend series down there. That's why you see LeMahieu close to Rendon. He's kind of slapping his glove, trying to keep him close. Axford very deliberate to home plate. Seventy seven missing in one one. Usually starts an inning Axford. Zimmerman made an offer that one came whistling in there at 95. Wow. Hey, just tell by Ryan's body language, he thought that ball was in. He stopped his swing because he thought this is a ball, I don't want to hit it. When you have two home runs in a game, you're seeing the, the baseball like a beach ball. And he thought that was in and so did pitch track. That was Nissan tracking that heater. That's how this guy used to throw when he was in Milwaukee. Had 105 saves in three years. One two to Zimmerman. Ryan doesn't bite on the off speed. Seeing it good. Four four ball game. Bottom of the seventh. 492 Rockies 480 Nats. Zimmerman right field base hit. On one hop. Here comes Rendon. The throws a good one and he's out. Zimmerman will trade places with him as Carlos Gonzalez throws out Anthony Rendon for the second out of the inning and Michael McHenry comes up limping. Well I think Bob Henley sent Anthony Rendon because Carlos Gonzalez had to stay back on this ball because it was hit so hard. Watch him sit on the ball to play the hop. He didn't have momentum. But as soon as he fielded it cleanly you know he's got one of the better right field arms in baseball. Very accurate. He doesn't just have a good arm. He throws guys out and they are looking at it to see if he blocked home plate and didn't give Rendon a lane. That's all I can come up with right here because Rendon was out. Was he straddling the line? Ooh, he was. We got something here maybe. Watch where the foot is. He set up there. The throw didn't take him there. And you're not allowed to, to block home plate unless the throw takes you into it. And he set up blocking home plate. Nats have a chance to go ahead five to four right here. They sure do. Just keep your eye on the left leg, left foot. Yeah, Rendon never had a chance to get there. All right, we, I tell you, this is the one call where when it's been reversed, you've seen some heated arguments between managers and umpires. The there, crowd is reacting. A little rumble here in the ballpark after they watch it on the scoreboard. Throw takes you into the runner. That's fine, but if you set up in foul territory and not fair territory and you you're not giving the runner a path That's not okay You know some of the crowds looking at this saying hey this is really the first time this year in this ballpark We've seen this situation. So a lot of the folks don't know how to react This, this is the one card where I mean if you play this down the middle the Rockies did everything right and if this gets exactly. overturned, it's really not fair It's a way the rules set up and obviously Nats fans in the first base dugout wants it to be overturned But when you have an outfielder make a perfect throw the catcher make a perfect tag and his foot was in Foul territory and you may overturn it. This could I don't know see how it goes runner is They're gonna still call him out And now here's where managers get upset because Matt Williams is out of the dugout. They don't challenge that he's unless they think they've really got a shot. Well, he's asking where is he supposed to go? And he has a point. 
But you're also allowed to as a runner, which nobody does anymore, to truck the catcher right there if you want. If he's blocking home plate, you can run him over. He's talking with Jeff Kellogg, the crew chief. Call was made, of course, by Alan Porter, the home plate umpire. He said if he reaches out to catch a ball and then he goes back, it would be different. He could read his lips. But right there, he's set up in foul territory. And if his foot's on the other side of the line and he makes his play, by the rule itself, and maybe they're saying his foot was set up and, and then when the throw came, he backed across the line. But there wasn't anywhere for Anthony Rendon to go right there. Yeah, you look at that and you wonder, okay, if that's not blocking the plate, what is? See, I just like the good old days when you could crush him. So here's Worth. Zimmerman did go to second on the throw. Well, what a day for Ryan Zimmerman. Three for four. Almost had another RBI, and that's ball one to Jason, who's homered, singled, walked, and scored two runs. Worth against Axford, one for four. Jason lined out to right against this right-hander Friday night. I mean, the bottom line is this is a bad rule, and there's going to be a Game 7 in a World Series where that play right there is going to decide whether you have a parade or not. And, and for me, that's just that's hard to live with e on either side. Sure. Like Walt Weiss was going to go berserk right there if that got overturned, a 4-4 game in the seventh. They did everything right. Minus his foot was four inches where it wasn't supposed to be. Just leave the game be. It's been great for a long time. Yeah. And it all goes back to the Buster Posey injury, right? A lot it of does. this. It does. But there's a lot of things that he didn't do right on that play. Four four game. Hits are even at nine. Counts even at one one. And Worth to short. Right there is Discussion. Inning over. Nats had a double and a base hit and a challenge that did not go into the eighth tight. Dodger Stadium, Palm Trees, Museums, and L.A. This is L.A. Geo, 8-4, last seven starts, 4-0 with a 177 ERA. 
Bert Anderson, a 6-6 pitcher for the Dodgers. Coverage begins at 9.30 p.m. That's extra. How big is that first game of the series when you're looking at Grinky and Kershaw the next two nights? And Anthony Rendon still chatting with Jeff Kellogg out there. Drew Storen against Paulson, McHenry, and Descalso, top of the eighth inning. Well, sometimes as an eighth or a ninth inning guy, you get to come back the next day after a rough outing. In this case, it takes Drew 36 hours or more. And he faces Ben Paulson. First time they match up, swing and a miss. Eighth inning it underway. Paulson doubled out to left center last time up. Scored on the Parker base hit. It gave the Rockies the lead at that moment. That's a fair ball. No, it would just got to the right of the bag. Hugging the line all the way down there. The call made by Mark Ripperger. Ryan Zimmerman guarding that line. So I, I guess a catcher can't block the plate unless he has a ball. So before the ball gets there, he can't block the plate. And, and what McHenry did is he, he caught the ball. And they're saying that he blocked the plate after he caught the baseball, which you can do if the throw beats a runner. But the shot we had, he was in foul territory the whole time. Yeah, he, his move, his foot was planted and never moved. And I think that's what the clubhouse saw, and that's what Matt Williams saw from the dugout, and that's why they challenged that. One ball, two strikes to Paulson. And 83 stays outside. But they should have a five foot rule. If you're out by five feet, the catcher can stand on his head or do whatever he wants. Right? I mean, in the, spirit, ball, in the spirit of the game, if a guy makes a good throw and a big out in a ball game, right? By no means was that a close play. the new stuff going on in Major League Baseball you'd hope that in a big game in a really big game the common sense rules the day two two to Paulson did he go he did not says Brian Onora and the count goes to three and two Did he go? Oh. Breaking ball hit hard in the right field. He went down and got that slider and got the sweet spot on it. And the Rockies are doing to Drew Storen what no other team really has been able to do to him this year. Well, Drew Storen thought he had a strikeout, then he went with a slider right here at 83, and Paulson does a nice job of going down and getting that one. That's a beautiful piece of hitting by the Rockies' first baseman. Michael McHenry, first time against Drew Storen. Escobar just in front of the second to third baseline. Desmond Rendon double play depth. McHenry comes up to bunt and that fastball up and in. Did it get him? The umpire raised his hands as if foul ball. Or was he just calling time? Boy, that was dangerous. 
But did he pull the bat back? You can appeal this if you're Wilson Ramos and Matt Williams. Even if it hits him, if he kept the bat out there to bunt, it's a strike. Looks like he got it back, though. Whew. I'm right in the hand, right hand. The runner at first, Ben Paulson, is still there. Walt Weiss looking into his dugout, and they're going to challenge the foul ball call and probably win it. So the crew chief and the home plate umpire to the headsets again. I saw it. I thought I saw his fingers move, and I thought it hit him in the hand. I don't think it hit the bat. They called it a foul ball, Matt. Yeah, I think Williams on the top step. Walt Weiss challenging. And watch his fingers. Michael McHenry involved in everything here all of a sudden. So again, Alan Porter, home plate umpire, crew chief, second base, Jeff Kellogg. And Walt Weiss hoping to have two on, nobody out for Descalso, who's kind of crafty with the bat. They're going to send him to first base. And a chat with Kellogg and Storen as the crew chief goes by the mound. Well, in a game with so many home runs, it might come down to a bunt. Good. Now Descalso and Storen, who've seen each other in the regular season and postseason play. In the regular season, Descalso won for four against him. And he was the guy that Drew walked the other night. Rockies have two on, nobody out in a two, actually a 4-4 game, eighth inning. And the bunt laid down, no play at third. Drew fires to Zimmerman at first for the out. Next up, the free swinging outfielder, Kyle Parker. Well, the Rockies had second and third in the third inning. You remember Flande led off with a base hit bunt. Charlie Blackman followed with a base hit bunt. Reyes sacrificed, sacrifice, excuse me, and then Gonzalez struck out, Arenado struck out. Max Scherzer went to the extra fastball. Similar situation right here in the eighth with the game on the line. One of the better hitters in the league on deck in the number nine spot after the double switch, DJ LeMayu. Two story fastball upstairs 95 for strike one more fastball for strike one you're thinking a pair of killer sliders coming Drew Storm has to pitch for the strike out. Parker 26 bats at the big league level six hits three RBIs one of those today. That was 95. Lots of Ben Paulson at third. He's not getting down the line. I don't think the Rockies have the contact play on. And, and you see where Yanel Escobar is playing. He's standing so close to him that, that Paulson can't get a lead. And it doesn't look like he's really extended down the line. That's how as an infielder you peek over and you see if they're running the contact play. It doesn't look like Walt Weiss has it on based on his lead. 0-2 with one out. The slider. He started and stopped and no swing. And if you peek over as an infielder and you look at that lead, you can creep back just a little bit and give yourself another half a step step of range based on what you're seeing going on with the, the runner at third base. 
if you see him really busting it in his secondary lead, you know the contact play on, you stay in. But you can give yourself some room right now. Target away. Fastball. Chop. Drew's got it. He goes right at the runner. Two men on third base nearly. And now one more throw and a tag will take care of the rundown. One, five, two for the second out. And it looked like they, they did have the contact play on, or he just read the high chop, but what an athletic play by Drew Storm. Saving the day, gives it up. You know, Escobar to Wilson Ramos. Both runners advance, but the, the big out's the one you want to play. What a play by Drew Storm. Careful when you cross the runner, though, when you give up the baseball. If he touches you, it's interference, and he gets the next base. Now two outs, and D.J. LeMayu. Get up, Drew Storm. Look at the X mo Barishnikov. D.J. LeMayu against Drew Storm, one for four career. Drew got him out Friday night. You know, Ian Desmond on that play was lined up kind of right behind the mound. But if that ball takes that extra hop, Ian may not even have time for a throw home. So Drew Storen really took care of business there. Second and third, two outs. And LeMayu, well placed. One run in. Here comes another. And the guy with the sixth highest batting average in the league comes off the bench and drives in two runs with a seeing eye ground ball. 6 4 Colorado. Well, good base running by Kyle Parker getting to second base in the, in the rundown. He ends up scoring. And now a 4 4 game is 6 to 4. And Drew Storm can't believe it again. Damage done by the Rockies here in the eighth. Yeah, they have scored six runs on him in this series. Top of the order now, Charlie Blackman. How about that, DJ LeMayu getting a day off, and then he comes out in the eighth inning and puts them ahead. Target away. Strike call. Ideally in that rundown, I, I know you're going a million miles an hour out there and you're thinking about just keeping the go-ahead run from scoring, but if you run them both back to the bag when they're standing on there, every once in a while you get a full-on panic by the runners and you get a couple guys out. You just tag them both. O2 now. Time given very late. It's a late timeout. And Drew really hadn't taken that long. It's not like he was holding, holding. Rendon a couple of steps onto the outfield grass. Zimmerman holding LeMayu. And the 0-2 again upstairs. Well, 
Well, offense hasn't been a problem for the Rockies all season long. It's been their pitching. They, they put up runs. They score runs. They just give up way more than they score, and, that, and that's been their big problem. Yeah. And they, the games they lose, it's usually eight to six. And I'm taking your point, which means there's a long way to go yet in this game. There is. All right, there's the strikeout. Takes care of the eighth. But the Rockies pick up two on the LeMayu hit. Now the dance. Have Desmond Ramos Taylor coming up. Eddings loading that baby up. Beautiful day at the ballpark. Now the Nats have to make it really pretty with some late inning rally action. Desmond Ramos and Taylor coming up. John Axford still in the game after he gave up the Zimmerman base hit and the Worth ground ball out. Desmond today 0 for 3 reached on the error by Arenado and a hard hit ball in the second ground ball and a strikeout. And Axford just holds on way too long there. Axford walked Desmond Friday night. Fast ball in there. Wilson Ramos after Rian. And then Michael A. Taylor here, bottom of the eighth. Desmond, right side, hot shot. Ben Paulson handles it on a strong play for the first out. Pretty good swing, pretty good play. Next up, Wilson Ramos. A nice job of going with the fastball away, one hop bullets. 
and Ben Paulson make it a nice play. Well, Sir Ramos over for three against Axford, who got him out on a ground ball to short in his eighth inning in game one of this series. Wilson today one for three. Opposite field single off the scoreboard last time up. One well to left, but over there is Kyle Parker. Two outs. Follow the Nats wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. That bet is up to the moment at any moment within game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Now Michael A. Taylor 0 for 3 and hitless in this series at 0 for 11. The one plate appearance against Axford who struck him out here Friday night. Nats need a base runner so they can get it down to Danny Espinosa who's on deck. And that will get that job done. Great swing by Taylor out to right center. So he finally gets off the schneid against the Colorado staff and the Nats have the tying to run into the batter's box with Danny Espinosa. Nice swing right there by Michael A. This is where that trail runner getting to second base Parker's big one run game. You got a guy with 13 stolen bases. On first, and you're thinking about Michael Taylor running right here, getting a scoring position in a five to four game, but because Parker advanced on the run down that had some throws in it. Now a two run game. Danny Espinosa, career 0 for 1 against John Axford. Jonathan Papelbon has been out in the bullpen throwing for a while. I'm telling you though in Drew Storm's defense in that rundown car he had tunnel vision. It's all he cared about was that lead runner not scoring. He didn't know the other runner was standing on third base too and he could tag them both. All he knew is this guy's not scoring and I'm getting him out so I'm giving up this baseball and let you guys do it. Taylor running off speed pitch. He's going to beat that by a mile. Michael A. Taylor with his 14th. And the Nats keep that consecutive stolen base streak going. They well, haven't he, been caught in a while. He gets the top speed so fast, and he's a long strider that, I mean, this is a, a potential 40 stolen base guy when he gets, you know, five, 600 at bats. He can outrun a bad jump. That's how fast he is, and that's how much ground he gathers with his long strides. Shift on for Espinosa. An RBI on any ground ball through shortstop. Axford drops in 78 on the curveball. It's one and two. About 20 miles an hour slower than his fastball. Six four Rockies, bottom of the eighth. Seventy nine again had to swing with two strikes. Swinging a miss on a heater. 
John Axford gets the Rockies four big outs in this one's into the ninth inning. 6-4 Colorado. Highlights include Military Appreciation Night, camo shirt, replica jersey. There's a Ryan Zimmerman bobblehead in there somewhere. There's fireworks all over the place. For all your ticket information, go to PotomacNationals.com. Rocky 6, Nats 4. Jonathan Papelbon trying to keep this a two-run game. On a regular basis, the Nats will visit the Youth Baseball Academy over in Ward 7 across the river. Fantastic facility. And it's even more special for the kids when Max Scherzer shows up or Anthony Rendon's there or Denard Spann, any of the guys, Joe Ross, I, he throws a little harder than that. We want to give a special shout out to our buddy Tal Alter. Tal does a fantastic job over there in directing. And the kids are learning about baseball, they're learning about competition, but they're learning about life as well. And uh, there are a lot of people in the D.C. area who give of their time to go over there and help out from time to time, and we appreciate them. Jonathan Papelbun. And this is Drew Stubbs batting for the pitcher spot, leading off the top of the ninth. A fastball slider split the arsenal. Fastball average in 91.2 miles an hour. Swing and a miss by Stubbs, who career against Papelbon is one for five with four strikeouts. One ball, two strikes. Stubbs, Gonzalez, and Arenado. For the Rockies in the top of the ninth. And that ball hit well to left. Jason Worth kind of circling behind it. A little forward to make that grab for the first out. We'll be rooting for the Rockies starting tomorrow. They're going to City Field for a four game series with the Mets. I think they at Nice, Harvey. DeGrom and Syndergaard is what I heard. I think Harvey pitched what uh, Friday night at Tampa Bay, so he'll be toward the end of that series. I'm going to call Bob Guerin, their bench coach tonight, tell him pitch to cargo. He is he, he can't really scuffling. <laughs> Fastballs down the middle, sliders, center cut. Yeah, he's scuffling. Go Help right, us. Go Help right us. after him. Arenado hit, hit every ball you can to them or to him over there. Cargo today, two for four, a pair of solo home runs. In this series, three home runs, six RBIs. So against Papelbon Career. 
They've only, well, they met four times, two hits. Arenado one for three, the on deck hitter, his career number against Papelbon. The Nats will have the top of their order due up, bottom nine. The, the one thing that, that, that Carlos Gonzalez has to maintain is his strike zone. When you get locked in as a hitter, sometimes you have a tendency to think you can hit every pitch, and for a while you can actually. When, when you're in the zone, you start hitting pitches over your head, at your ankles, nasty sliders at your back knee, you're getting inside of, you're drilling them all over the park. And for a while, while you're in the zone and the game is going real slow, you can hit those. And, and how you get out of a real hot streak is by continuing to, to chase. And all of a sudden your strike zone gets a little bit big and that's how hot hitters become cold. So, you know, there's that tendency to just keep swinging at balls because you're getting away with it for a while. But the way hot hitters stay hot for longer periods of time is really stay focused and stay in their happy zone and not chase too many pitches out of it. I mean, when you're as locked in as he is, you get to first base or you come back to the dugout and teammates ask you what you hit and you say, I don't know. Hmm. Slider, fastball, would you? I don't know. Two-two pitch with one out. Papelbon keeps pumping strikes, and he gets. Gonzalez with 93 for the second out. See a pitch that he's hit in this hot streak. He chases a fastball up and away because you get that feeling of invincibility up there where I can hit everything. And you see kind of the rise effect. If you look at the Exmo and the Jonathan Papelbaum fastball, it looked like it was going to be lower when he had to commit. Ended up above his letters. Here's Nolan Arenado. He's hit first time up, one for four today. And in the series, he's five for 11. As mentioned, one for three career against Papelbon. Pops him up on the first pitch out of play. Rockies, by the way, getting ready to queue up Tommy Canely, who got his first big league save here Friday night. As FP mentioned that night, they're doing a bullpen by committee thing. And Bob Weiss going with the hot hand. So Canely took care of business ninth inning, following Axford like he will today. And he's going to face Bryce Harper again. Yes, he will. This one out of play, further to the right. No balls, two strikes. Bomb pitch, and you've seen him in Philadelphia. So I'm with the Red Sox. That rising fastball, that fastball that he teases you right around the letters with, with two strikes. See, so many hitters chase that. I remember Tyler Clipper had a year where that was his out pitch, the fastball up that guys would chase. But when he gets runners out there, and it's high drama time, he uses that split. Goes with the heater, overpowers the right handed batter. And Ryan Zimmerman under it. On to the bottom of the ninth we go. Papelbon a one, two, three. It'll be Escobar and then Anthony Rendon. Hopefully, guys support for Bryce Harper.
got out of the ball game. They got him off the hook and the bullpen. Okay with Jansen and okay with Rivera. But Drew had some problems. Yeah, I have a tough time hearing it, Johnny, with uh, sound and. Uh, but yeah, you know the whole deal is we get in a big start early, two home runs, three home runs, first second inning, and uh, we weren't able to hold on to it. If anybody you think is going to hold and shut that team down, it's going to be Scherzer, and he's not done that. Uh, but the bats uh, are coming. Uh, Ten hits today. Had the opportunity after the fourth inning, we had five different times we had runners in second base, weren't able to plate those. Obviously in the seventh inning. We had Rendon thrown out at the plate on a play that probably controversial uh, about blocking home plate. Um, the rule is clear now, and that was not the correct call in my opinion, uh, but they flip-flopped on it all year long. Carlos Gonzalez has done major damage today with two home runs, but the two runs in the eighth inning, the difference in the game. We go to the bottom of the ninth, the Nats are down by two, and back up to Bob at FB. All right, gentlemen, thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Ray. And right in front of you guys out in left field and a whole bunch of rally caps. There's a new left fielder for the Rockies, and that's Drew Stubbs. Tommy Kingley. My first career save the other night. Struck out Bryce Harper in the game. Fastball 96. Occasional slider at 86, but he really likes the changeup, as we saw at 88 miles an hour. 30th appearance. All right, he's hitting 145. Lefties, however, 302. And that was on his 26th birthday, that first save Friday. So it's Escobar, Rendon, and Harper. He walked Yunel Escobar in the ninth inning Friday night. And he struck out Bryce Harper to end the game, so we'll look forward to that. Hopefully. Some table setting action going on here. Escobar 0 for 4 today. And in the series, 0 for 8 with a pair of walks. <laughs> 85 and it came dipping back right at the end. This guy originally in the Yankee organization. Rockies got him in the Rule 5 draft two years ago. He goes up there again, but this one too high. Counts even 1 1. Yeah, and it was a slider right there. He only throws that occasionally. And based on that one, I mean, his fastball was 98 the other night. Still hasn't thrown it. Two run lead. Escobar and Nolan Arenado. That one gets by him. What is going on over there? A couple of hard hit balls, no doubt about that. The Nats get a big break. Huge break. Are you kidding me? Two run game. The guy that we just showed you a highlight package on all the tough plays has had trouble with the routine play today, and he sat on it. Once you sit on it, your hands get stiff. You know, all those plays we showed you that he's made in the series, his feet were moving, his glove was soft. And the two errors he's made today in the five hole, he just sat on. And I think that's his third error of the game if you count the throw home to Jason Worth, which I think is going to get changed to an RBI and a fielder's choice. First career three error game. That is nuts. It'll be a two error game tomorrow. Anthony Rendon now. As mentioned, did not face King Lee. Friday night, Anthony didn't play in that ball game. And that runner at first base opens up a huge hole. Yeah, I guess now how does Kenley deal with a little adversity? Right. You know, a one, two, three saves one thing, but you get some guys on, you get the crowd into it, you're on the road. Top of the order. This is a big boy save for the Rockies. Closer de jour. Rally lids. I like it. Gets in the strike zone with 86 right there. Two balls, one strike. But he doesn't like his fastball, does he? Nope. Hit 
Anthony Rendon takes it and it's three and one. A guy with that kind of velocity trying to trick everybody in front of Bryce Harper, no less. I could be wrong, but is he throwing a fastball? I didn't see any to Escobar. Three pitches there. I have 57% of the time fastball, 41% of the time changeup, and 3% of the time sliding. Floats one in there at 85, and it's a strike. That ball's too high, is what Matt Williams is saying. Anytime you see a catcher catch a ball around his mask and pull it down, you were thinking that pitch might have been up. Well, if it's close, got to be hacking here. Anthony taking no chances. I'm still thinking no fastballs. Might have missed one. I don't think I've seen a heater. Maybe one. Tying run in the box. Slugger on deck. Another 3 2 pitch. And Rendon serves one out to the right. Another changeup. I mean, as a hitter, you're thinking he's got to throw a fastball, doesn't he? One of these? I mean, and Rendon's got to be ready for it because it's mid to upper 90s. And he's doing a nice job of adjusting to that changeup and staying alive. Three two again. Escobar short lead. Up and in. Two on. Nobody out. And there's the 95. Fastball. Up and in. Ball four. Good at bat by Anthony Rendon. Line moving. And Bryce thinking about sending everybody home happy. Pitching coach Steve Foster out for a visit. Got two home runs in the on deck circle, too. So, May 9th, a little flashing back. Bryce Harper gone. Against the Atlanta Braves. I believe that's where he took the three homer game into the walk off game when he was just absolutely locked in. Bryce Harper had three homers in the first game of that, or the last game of the Miami series, then two against the Braves, and then the walk of It was a nutty week for him and a fantastic week for everybody around here. I'll just say this, the, the chocolate sauce is getting moldy. It needs to be stirred a bit. So Kingley struck out Bryce to end the game Friday night, but a whole new scenario here with nobody on. Or rather, nobody out. Time given. You just think maybe you sit on a change up early. I mean, as a hitter, it's so hard to get away from the fastball because it goes against everything you've you know, taught yourself your whole career. You take one down the middle and you're kicking yourself all night, but he's thrown so many change ups here. Look for one up, sit on one. Somewhere in this count, you know you're going to get one, you'd think at least. There's one. And don't forget, Bryce, great at making adjustments. He never saw Kingley before the other night. He put his arsenal in his computer, and now he knows a little more what to expect. Harper, a fly ball, short right center, called by Blackman for the first out. 
And Bryce one for five today. Now Ryan Zimmerman, who's had a fantastic day. Another changeup. It looked like he did sit on it. He just didn't let it get deep enough. Had a pretty good rip at it. Just got underneath it. He wasn't fooled. He wasn't out in front. Ryan Zimmerman, one career played appearance against Canely, a base on balls. That was previous to this series. Pretty good. Don't forget his out today was a bullet to third base. So two home runs, a bullet to right last time. And a hot shot to third base. Everything on the barrel here from Zimmerman. Right now, Anthony Rendon can get a huge lead at first. Time run. They play way off the line. Zimmerman takes a fastball inside 2-0. and oh. And Michael McHenry to the mound. All systems go. Danger on deck as well. It's good rally lead. Outside ball three. Yes. He doesn't like to swing 3 0 generally. You probably have the option to be hacking right here. Might be the only fastball he sees. If you're ever going to do it, this is the time, especially with the day that Ryan's having. is loaded nobody out or rather one out after the Harper fly ball so that's big it gets the time run to second base and Jason Worth coming in okay it's huge a 3 0 change up All right this guy's a change up machine he's Tommy Changely today I mean, you, you can't say that was a pitch around putting the tie and run on second base and the winning run on first with one out, but a 3 0 changeup. I'm shocked he didn't try to locate a fastball right there, but maybe it feels like he has better command of that pitch, and maybe he thought that Zimmerman had the green light. Either way, game falls to Jason Worth. 33,157 here today. Worth is homered, singled, walked, and scored two runs. 0 for 1 career against Canely. That ball didn't miss Jason's front elbow by much. It's so easy to say up here when you don't have the adrenaline going that Jason Worth has down there. Game on the line, bottom of the ninth. But this guy's feeling it. The pressure's on the youngster on the mound right now in his second career save chance. And you're just looking for one pitch in one spot. And you don't want that. Not yet, at least. My guy goes to the changeup again and gets the call off the plate. Yeah, that's an unusual call for a guy who's been all over the place. Well, it's an unusual call all day for Alan Porter back there. He's been floating.
96 and Jason couldn't get to it. One ball, two strikes. Third base Escobar reached on the air. And then Rendon walked. Harper the fly ball. Zimmerman walked. And Worth takes one in the dirt ball too. And the way this guy is pitching he reminds me of the late Rob Beck. I mean, he's got the hair flowing. It's all he's doing is flipping changeups up there, using his fastball off the changeup. The kind of his delivery and all the off speed he's throwing. You'd think it was him out there. Two two. Swing and a miss. Two down. It's going to be up to Ian Desmond. Who against Canely is one for one career. Hey, Worth been hunting that fastball the whole at bat. He got it, but it was up. Couldn't catch up. So a big out for the Rockies here at the bottom of the ninth. And Ian Desmond going to give it a whirl. Desmond today 0 for 4 in the series 3 for 10. Two walks. Two batted in. Ninety seven and ripping. Shadows growing long along that third baseline. Not affecting the hitters yet. Desmond, ground ball to short. Series over. Rockies take two out of three. And the Nats at 5 p.m. stay a game and a half behind the Mets who lost today. So it's a three and four home stand, a split with Arizona, and then losing two out of three to a last place ball club in the West that has a whole lot of offense going for it. Rocky six, Nats four for FP and Dan. Bob Carpenter will join you tomorrow night on Masson when the Nats start a 10 game road trip in LA against the Dodgers. Johnny and Ray will get you going with Nats Extra at 9 30. This has been a presentation of Masson. Stay tuned now for Nats Extra post game straight ahead and from the booth. So long for just a while.